Item 10 is items from Council. The first is item 10A. This is a proposal by Councilman Shadid. Ed? Last week I outlined the um, multiple studies outlining um, that the idea of protecting both the smokers and non-smokers from secondhand smoke with ventilation systems is flawed. Um, I, I think the, the evidence uh, is overwhelming in that regard. Um, on Tuesday, the same day, the World Health Organization published its study indicating that some 600,000 people will die this year of secondhand smoke, and they lay responsibility firmly on, on governments as not taking enough steps to protect uh, their citizens from the effects of secondhand smoke. Um, I want to make clear uh, to the council and to the public that um, you are not going to, uh, that, it, that is to protect the rights of, of, of workers, both the smokers and non-smokers who are harmed by the secondhand smoke. But also, just in terms of the smokers, you're not going to improve their health or wellness just by making it more difficult uh, to smoke. And so I think that this has to be coupled with, uh, with wellness programs that incentivize and help uh, our city employees to, um, with smoking cessation. Uh, that will certainly be an obsession of mine. I think you start with the 4,300 uh, employees uh, and then you work your way out towards the rest of the city after that. But um, I think that uh, there's got to be a carrot as well as the stick. But this, this is not just about the, the uh, smokers and the right of the smokers. This is about the right of all our workers to have a, a safe environment. Okay. Your Honor, comments, I, yeah, Pat. I, I think uh, the idea and the purpose is great. I, I agree entirely with what trying to be accomplished here. I, I'm concerned it is this is not more of a comprehensive overall program to deal with the smoking issue. All this does it will be move a bunch of smokers out of this building. Uh, and they'll be around the entrances of the building smoking cigarettes during the day, which I think is a very poor image to portray in a citizen of Oklahoma City. Uh, I, I think the smoking room idea is a bad idea. It could have never been put in place. But I think before we just draw a line through it, we need to have a, a comprehensive program in place to deal with smoking sensation, uh, what the impact, the incentives, and or penalties might be with the result of that kind of program. I, I, I'm just a little concerned that this is a knee-jerk reaction that will accomplish something that's good, but if we were thoughtful and deliberate about it, we might get a much better product out of it. And adopting this, I think, might stand in the way of that. Therefore, I, I, as much as I approve the idea and the concept, I will vote against it. Okay. Mayor. <coughs> um, as, as a smoker who uh, quit smoking, uh, par partially because of the inconvenience um, brought about by smoking ordinances. I'm, I'm very much in support of this. I mean, one of the re I quit smoking 20 years ago, and one of the reasons I found it much easier to, to quit was is that the laws or the rules, the regulations at certain buildings made it more difficult to continue to smoke. Uh, my personal example is when it really dawned on me how stupid it was. Is I was I left a courtroom in the courthouse, and you couldn't smoke in the courthouse. I reached in my pocket, pulled out a cigarette, stuck the cigarette in my mouth, rode the elevator down with the cigarette in my mouth, walked outside and lit the cigarette. And I thought, you know, I, I've always considered myself pretty smart, but that, that's stupid. I mean, if, that, if, if cigarettes have that, the control on me that much, but it was that act that was the epiphany for me to make me quit smoking. There was no secession plan. There was nothing. I just thought... It finally occurred to me that they have made it so inconvenient that I've got to go back inside myself and decide whether I want to continue to do this or not. And I've been—I've quit 20 years ago, and um, it wasn't—it was difficult to do that. Not easy to quit smoking. I previously had—I uh, thought I'd accomplished the ability to quit smoking because I'd quit five or six times before that. So I thought I was an expert at quitting. But um, it was that incident that caused me to quit. I think 
that it will change people's habits, but it will make a direct difference on non-smokers. People that don't smoke will be put in a position where they won't have to participate with all the side stream smoke or the secondhand smoke that occurs inside the building. It's a proven fact that the ventilation systems don't work well, that a lot of the smoke comes out every time the door opens. And I think it's a step in the right direction. I would not oppose putting something in the fiscal 11-12 budget to encourage some kind of a cessation program inside our health care to do that, because I think that's part of what we need to do. But to not do it because we don't have a cessation program, to me, is denying the gravity of the problem of people continuing to smoke and the cost, the long-term cost. We've talked a lot. We're talking about walkability. The mayor's been out front nationally on health care initiatives, and I think this is a step we ought to take. And we supported, as a group, the legislative agenda, the legislative priority to try to support the smoke-free Oklahoma program, which gives the city the opportunity to regulate smoking inside its boundaries. And I think this is a step we could take in that direction to show the rest of the public and show the tobacco industry that we're serious about reducing the number of people that smoke and thereby saving lives and reducing the cost to the taxpayer of health insurance for government employees. And so I have no reservation about supporting it, although I do think it is only a first step and certainly not the only thing that needs to be done with regard to assisting people to get off the terrible addiction that tobacco has become, nicotine has become. Meg? I guess that's a little bit part of my problem here, too. I wish people wouldn't smoke. I never have, obviously, but I wish they wouldn't. I don't know if it's the age or anything, but people choose. But I do have a question about where our employees are going to go. As a landlord of several properties where I have multiple tenants, I don't allow them to smoke. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't allow them to smoke in my building, but they do come outside, and they stand outside in front of the building, and those entering and leaving are faced with dealing with secondhand smoke as they have to walk past or walk through these people. So I think it's a little unfair to suggest that we're going to not inflict people with secondhand smoke by just closing our facility inside and moving them outside our building. So a plan to address that problem, I think, needs to be somewhere factored into this. Yeah. Just a quick comment on secession opportunities that we have within the city for employees. Councilman Shadid asked for some information on that a couple weeks ago, and I gave him some things that are out there. It doesn't mean we couldn't do a better job of having more plans or doing a better job of educating our employees as to the plans that we have, but we do have a plan within our EAP, our Employee Assistance Program, that is available to all employees for smoking cessation. And depending upon which health care provider that you have, they have different options available to them in the different health plans. Now, again, we can maybe negotiate and try to get some better plans out there, and we can also educate our employees more as to what's available out there. But if somebody does want to smoke, there are tools available to them if they do want to stop smoking. Larry? I personally, like Meg, do not smoke and do not approve of smoking, but I believe this particular ordinance here or resolution has the possibility of some unintended consequences. And so at this point, without a thorough vetting of the whole issue and tying in wellness, I can't support it. Okay. Skip? Well, I think that, you know, anything that we can do to increase the health of any citizen, whether or not they're employees at the city or, you know, citizens within the city, you know, one of the interesting facts I think that we've failed to address is the fact that, you know, we talk about health. The mayor has his initiative, and we have the issue with schools, and, you know, we talked about the issue of obesity with young people. It would just seem like that with everything that we keep talking about, as opposed to just cutting and slicing pieces out of the whole, why don't we look at an overall initiative that addresses the full health concerns of citizens in the city of Oklahoma City? 
And there's enough experts out, there's enough national initiatives that we could incorporate some of those and make it an overall wellness program for the city of Oklahoma City. And that would include the, 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 the employees that work in the city of Oklahoma City and every citizen in the city would see that this city is taking a grand step towards putting together a comprehensive plan to address health in Oklahoma City. You know, so I, you know, I, I can't, I can't say this is good. I'm sorry, I can't say this is bad. I know the fact that you know uh, what smoking and the, the 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 negative consequences it have on those individuals who indulge in it and those individuals who are secondhand receivers of it. But at the same time, I, I also would like for us to look at you know uh, this whole global concept of health. And I think that we could could put all this together in in one big program, and we'd be f much farther ahead in addressing this whole issue, and 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 also our issue of insurance. I think we would see a dramatic drop in in our insurance costs if we took the initiative to sit down and fully plan uh, a comprehensive plan to address health care. Mayor, I, I, I'm disappointed that we're choosing, it sounds like we may choose just love this to death today. The fact is the health care problems in this country are like a foot-long hot dog. Anybody that thinks they can eat it in one bite has made a huge mistake. You can't eat it in one bite. It's a bite at a time. If we're going to say we can't do anything about health until we can do everything about health, well, good luck. Good luck. We'll be here a year from now, and we won't have done anything because that's the way. That's the nature of the beast. It's it's a million little things. It's an attitude thing, and you can't you can't start by saying once we figure out this complete global solution to health, then we'll do it. You do it one step at a time, and banning smoking inside this building is one step at a time. We're not banning it in Oklahoma City. We're not banning it inside your house. We're not doing anything else. The manager has said there are programs available, cessation programs are available if one wants to avail themselves of that. Statistics show we're we, everything we do anymore, it seems to me, we talk about economic development. Well, the statistics show that cities that, regu that are healthier are easier to sell when you go to sell economic development. One of the ways to be healthier is to reduce the number of people that smoke and die of lung-related disease. I mean, it's like the same thing with walking. It's the same thing with exercise. It's the same thing with losing weight. You know, we didn't object to the mayor's plan about let's lose some weight and saying, well, that's not a global solution. We haven't figured out cigarettes yet, or we haven't figured out the fact that people don't exercise enough yet. We said that was okay. This is one more step in that direction. And to love it to death with all these ideas about, well, if we just tweak it this way, if we just tweak it that way, uh, is very disappointing. It, it, I, I believe it's hypocritical. I believe it doesn't face the problem of the size of the, the, size of the problem in, in health care when we look at, the, at us as a country. We can do whatever we're going to, you know, we're going to find out where we stand here in a minute. But I think it's very disappointing to think that we would we would put health care in some kind of a category where you have to fix every detail of health before you can fix one detail. I think that's a mistake. Pete, I don't think you're being hold, fair with the hold colleagues. On. Pat, uh, David, and then Gary, and then, then Pat. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, I, I would like to see us adopt a more uh, in-depth health care policy, but until we do, I'm sure banning smoking inside the buildings will include, will be a part of that in-depth uh, health care initiative. So why not, why not start this immediately and then add to this decision other things that will improve all the employees' health? I don't see it as a negative to, in a sense, push the employees outside of the building. Uh, granted, it, it doesn't look great to see uh, people outside a, uh, a building smoke, but it sure doesn't look good for them to smoke inside either. So I'm for this idea, and I, I don't think it will slow down any efforts to adopt a more comprehensive policy. 
I think it's a great first step, and maybe it provides us the, uh, the initiative to keep moving forward with other more comprehensive ideas. Thank you. All right. Gary? Well, I, I support this resolution. Uh, we're only talking about two buildings here. All the rest of the city government buildings are smoke-free, as I understand it. Is that correct, Jim? Uh, office buildings and, and such. Um, but any other city-owned building has to have a designated smoking area or whatever. Right. And we're down to these two buildings here. Well, outside of the Ford Center and the Cox Center. and uh, Those are leased. To the, those are PPA facilities. Yeah, but the Ford... The Oklahoma City Arena closed its smoking area, I think, and I believe Cox is all outside now. Anyway, we're down to this. This resolution deals with two buildings in the city. All the rest of them are smoke-free, but I do have to echo Meg's concerns because if if the private-owned buildings downtown are any indication, all they do is step outside the door, and you got to walk through their smoke to get into the building. Um, and I'm afraid that's what's going to happen here because the, the city employees are going to either congregate at one of the doors into City Hall or they're going to congregate at the door into 420, uh, and you're going to have to walk through the secondhand smoke anyway. So I, that, that's my concern about uh, closing them. But having said all that, I am supportive of this resolution because you're just talking about two city buildings that, that have to join the rest of them in their prohibition. Okay. Pat? I would support the resolution if we could prohibit smoking in or around these two buildings. Because I think uh, standing in front of the building, on sitting out, on the steps out front of City Hall, smoking cigarettes is going to do two things. One, it, it's just a bad health signal, and second, it's going to be, aha, uh -huh, that's what I thought about city employees. All they do is sit around and smoke cigarettes all day. I think it's a bad image. It, it's just a bad health signal, and second, it's going to be, aha, uh -huh, that's what I thought about city employees. What the ills that be, that we are faced with today. What I'd like to see is a program that's designed to help smokers quit smoking. And I don't, I don't, I don't care about walkability. I don't care about weight. Today, uh, I certainly don't care about alcohol consumption because that's a special thing. But I think this is an opportunity. We have an opportunity here because Dr. Shadid's done a, a good job of calling this issue to our attention to do something positive about it. And, and I don't think just closing the smoking room in one building and then in six months later closing it in another building, a series of places, I guess, building, is is the answer. Uh, I, I think Pete's been a little bit unfair with our, uh, us, his colleagues, uh, to accuse us of loving this to death by suggesting we solve all the health problems in the world. I don't think I heard that uh, very frequently. I think there's a concern that we're not going far enough on the smoking issue to really make a, a difference. Uh, we're going to inconvenience some people. But we might get one or two people like Pete who are inconvenienced to the point of, of stopping. That apparently has not been the experience of other areas because if, if you look at any building downtown, uh, if you look at some of the other places I work, you see people standing outside the building smoking, which I think is a terrible issue. It's, it's, it's a health issue. It's an appearance issue. People leave their, the remnants of their cigarettes all over the ground. It's not good. And that's what we're choosing to do to the two buildings downtown. And I don't think that's a good solution. And for that reason, I will continue to, to support the idea of doing something about smoking, but to oppose this specific. All right. Yes. Just okay. a point of clarification on Councilman Mars uh, comment. Uh, this would only then uh, this only applies to city owned and operated buildings. There are some city owned buildings that are operated by lessees or management companies that would still have smoking. This wouldn't apply to them. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify that, that a couple of those are the airport where you're getting in, in, in into a, this wouldn't apply to them. And there is a smoking area within the airport where there's limited options for you. And I need to check on, on the Oklahoma City Arena because I thought those were still operable. But again, you're, you're paid in, you can't get out, and, and, and so I don't, I, I don't know about those two, but uh, or that one specifically. But I will check on that and get back to you. No. So, for point of clarification, you saying that the allows smoking? Inside the airport, there is a designated smoking room within within the airport, uh, within the secured area, and that's operated under the trust. Correct. But to the average citizen, they don't they, know the difference. They don't. They don't know nothing about a trust. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. But there is an ordinance that you can't be within 20 feet of 
intake, right? Yes, that's state law. It is actually in the resolution. It is 25 feet. You cannot be within 25 feet of the entrance or exit of the building. Enforcement's your problem. Because if 25 foot puts you out in the elements, I can assure you they're going to be closer than that if they can get out of the rain. And if they don't have a receptacle to put their remains in, then that's going to be another problem, too. Yeah, I don't know that we couldn't enforce it, though. I mean, it's handy. We have a police department. We have a city building. We have an enforcement issue. I mean, it ought to be possible. I'm not suggesting that we do or don't. I'm just saying that we ought to be able to handle that if that's a significant hurdle in this issue, and I suspect it is. I think we're all concerned about the unintended consequences of this idea. So I think the idea that there's a 25 foot state law is something we ought to consider enforcing if it turns into a problem today or six months from now. Would it be fair to say that we should consider enforcing it in reference to all properties, either within the trust and the city of Oklahoma City? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying that the idea that we don't enforce it doesn't mean we couldn't, and I'm really not going further than that at this point. But I think the idea is solid of enforcing it, but it needs to be vetted much further than just me giving an opinion on it. I'd just like to say as an ex-member of the Pete, as a physician, as a counselor, the city employees are self-insured. I just want you to know that I'm going to absolutely throw myself into wellness, smoking cessation, and the wellness of our city employees. I did present eight studies that indicated that harm is being done today to city employees, and every day that we wait is additional harm. I haven't heard anybody disputing that, any evidence to the contrary. It shuts down smoking in this building, but gives us six months to figure it out in the other building. And so to develop a wellness program and all that stuff may very well be in place before the six-month deadline takes effect. But in medicine, the first maxim is do no harm, and I would contend that by delaying, we are harming our city employees by continuing to allow secondhand smoke indoors. Aesthetics aside, the difference between walking past somebody smoking outdoors does not rise to the level of harm or even close to indoor smoking. And so it's two different things. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready to vote? We need a motion. How about a motion, Councilman Shadid? Second. All right. Catch your votes. Motion passes 7-2.